ahead and worship him for a moment. He's worthy. We, you're worthy, Lord. We praise you. We lift you up. We exalt you today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for thinking I was worth it, for we, that thinking that we were worth it. Amen. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in a, in a time of prayer over each and every need in this house. Amen. There are churches that don't believe that God can heal, that don't believe that God still does miracles, that don't believe that God still does healings. But I've come to tell you today, you are not in one of those churches. You are in a church that believes that God can heal. If you're sick in your body, God can heal you today. If you're sick in your mind, God can heal you today. Whatever your need is, God is able to heal you today. We want to remember several needs today. We want to remember Brother Larry Hot. He's in the hospital. Let's continue to remember Pastor Jeff Smith. He has a brain tumor. They do not believe it's cancerous, but let's keep him in our prayers. It's affecting his vision. And we also need to remember Sister Rebecca's family. Her grandmother passed away this past week. And each and every need that's represented in this house, we believe that God is a, is a miracle worker. He's still able to do healings, not just back then, but he still does them today. And we're going to take each and every need before the Lord. If you have a need, would you lift your hands right now? And let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you. God, we know you're our healer. Lord, we pray for each and every request that's, that's made mention today here today. Lord God, by the uplifted hand, we know you're our healer. Lord, we know you stu still do miracles. You're still a way maker. Lord, I pray for Brother Larry Hott. I pray for Pastor Jeff Smith. Lord God, I pray for Sister Rebecca's family, Lord God. God, I pray for each and every need in this house, Lord, that you would minister and move today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord one more time? Jesus. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I'm thankful for a God who hears and answers our prayer, responds to the cry of his people. You can return to your seats today and you can go ahead and be seated once again such a privilege to have each and every one of you here in the house of the Lord today so good to see sister Betty Wilson in the house of the Lord that was all she wanted for Mother's Day was to be with her family and to be in the house of the Lord today. What a, a special gift to be able to be here in service and to worship with us today. Amen. So good to have Brother Josh and Sister Ashley Barsati in service with us. Missionaries to Vietnam. As part of our extended family of our church. We're privileged to be able to support them and the work that they're doing there in Vietnam. We're very privileged here at CLC. To, to have part of our church family. Did we just lose the, the house sound? Are we good? There we go. It was still up here. I could hear myself really well. <laughs> We've got a new microphone today, if you haven't noticed, if you're wondering where is that amplification coming from. We're very privileged here. It's part of our church family to be blessed with three former first ladies that are part of our congregation here and that are still part of our church family and of course with our first lady sister Rebecca and today we want to honor them and I'm going to ask them to come up sister Peggy Smith is not able to to be here to be with us and part of our service today but we certainly honor sister Smith and thank God for her <laughs> I want Sister Alice Kirk to come up. We honor Sister Kirk and thank God for her. We love you. We love and appreciate Sister Angie Kirk. I want her to come up.
We honor you today. We thank God for you. I want Sister Rebecca Enzi to come up, our First Lady of Christian Life Center. We honor her today. We're so blessed and we thank God for each of these ladies and for what they mean to us. We're, we're talking about mothers today and they, they serve in that role not just for their respective families but for all of us. They, they love us. They invest in us. And so many of you here today, not just ladies, but so many of you here today, you're in church because of an investment that was made by them. They prayed for you. They were there for you. They've invested in you and loved you. One more time, can we give great honor and appreciation to each of these precious women of God. At this time, just remain standing with me for a moment. Today's a very special day, not just because it is Mother's Day, and Sister Kirk is going to take just a moment to share some things with you about why this day is extra special to her. Would you welcome Sister Kirk? First, I would like to say Happy Mother's Day to all the courageous, kind, self-sacrificing, and above all, godly women here today. And I also want to say Happy Mother's Day to our, our uh, First Ladies and Sister Rebecca. And I would like to say my mother, although they never called her First Lady, but she was a First Lady for 50 years while my dad pastored. So I say Happy Mother's Day to her too. <laughs> You may be seated. I just want to give thanks to the Lord today for something that he gave me, a special gift he gave me on Mother's Day 45 years ago. May the 13th, 1973, I was expecting my fourth baby. Knowing it was going to be a girl, I had four boys, six four, no, eight, six, and four. I had those four, bo three boys, and so I was expecting this fourth one, and you know, God gives us the desires of our heart, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah? And if we have faith, whatsoever we believe, that's going to happen, right? Well, but that does happen lots of times, but he also knows what's best for us, too. But anyway, this baby came different. All the other, the other three boys they came, I had all this pain and everything, and I had to go to the, run to the, get to the hospital. Well, this baby, I woke up at 7 o'clock on Mother's Day, getting ready to get up to take care of, get my boys ready for ch church. And uh, I had to run to the bathroom. Anyway, uh, he started out in the other boys. I had all this pain, had to go to the hospital. The doctor would break my water, but this, 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 child this fourth child was going to be different all the time anyway I didn't have the pain so I, I looked for the pain but I knew I was going to have this baby he is coming a little bit early not much early so anyway we had sister Hattie which brother pastor James my son always called her his second mom she came over and got my three boys and took them with her my husband took me to, to the hospital this was a little after seven o'clock had the baby at 9.04, he, had, he was back at church at 10 o'clock. Now, yeah, yeah, left me, and then he came back, but it, it also was not a girl. It was a boy. It was a sweet boy, and that didn't matter to me at all. Now, my mother had already had five grandsons, so every time, every time we had a, my sister I had a child, she wanted a little granddaughter. So I really felt for her more than I did for myself, even though I'd love to have a little girl. But I thank the Lord once I saw that baby, and we had already named him Deborah Louise. 
Deborah Louise, but then my husband, he said, well, this is going to be the last one. I said, well, he's going to get part of your name because the other boys didn't get that. So we named him James Lloyd, and we called him Jimmy, of course. And he was such a, he was a strong-willed child. But the Lord knew that someday he was going to have to have have that strong will because anybody that's a pastor you know there's a lot of people and you can't please everybody but he was a compassionate person too and he loved his daddy he loved his mommy too I know he did but he was a daddy's boy and if his dad went to church or if he went to camp or if he went to something a conference that I didn't get to go James liked to go so he got this desire in his heart to serve the Lord he got this desire and when we moved here I mean, he loved this church almost as much as his dad did. And he grew, you know, he was a very dependable person. And once, once, you know, he wasn't perfect. Now, I'm not wanting to make you think he's perfect. He was perfect. But, you know, the Lord showed me that God doesn't have to have perfection to use. It's that desire inside the heart that you have. And I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for the years that he gave me. Uh, to have my son and uh, it was very hard to lose him but you know when God's purpose is, purpose at that time was over uh, he if this house I think the second Corinthians 5 and 1 said if this house is dissolved or this body is dissolved we have a new one an eternal one made by God that's in heaven so I will meet him someday and everything but he loved the church he, he was very dependable he's a hard working person he was an enthusiastic person and uh, he was my son and 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 I loved him and uh, you can put that one picture on there now I had a I had a different picture to put up there but I don't know if it was my mother that she's she's packing all the time and putting things away and I put this picture away now so I don't know if, if I just myself can't remember where I put it I thought I did but when I went back it wasn't there but uh, the first picture was James as a baby and then the second picture which I will always cherish because he was with me on Mother's Day this was in 2013 and uh, let's give James a big hand right now <laughs> He loved you, just as your pastor loves you now, he loved you. I would like to say one more thing. I'd like to reiterate, last year, so he's been gone almost two years, last year I listened to the Mother's Day sermon that he gave us, and I listened to it again this year. And some of you might say, well, you just wanted to, him to say something about you. I wanted to hear him say, Mom. I wanted to hear him say mom, and, I, and I, so I listened to it last year and this year, and I probably will listen to it next year. But one of the things I want to re reiterate, his subject at that time was what, what, what mothers need to give or what mothers, if you have a praying mother. And Angie, this is what I remember, Landon, he said, if you go to hell, you won't slide in there easily because your mother prays for you all the time. And he said, that's the best gift that a mother can give to her children. You know, you might give them fame and fortune, but that's not going to last. But the best gift is that, that you could pray for them and so that if they do decide not to serve you, it won't. it's not gonna be an easy thing because mother prayed. So I thank all of you and I love every one of you. Thank you, Sister Kirk, that was beautiful. Mother's Day and on his birthday. You can be seated. At this time, it's going to be an extra special day for three families who will be dedicating their young men today. And I'm going to invite these three families to come at this time if Zach and Kaylee would come with Bo, Aaron, Chandler, and their family. Come on down. Boaz and Victoria, if they would come with Aiden, Michael, Lee, Muzan. 
then Garrett and Alyssa, with Emmett Joseph Williams. I want these three families to come. We're going to have a collective baby dedication today. On this very special day, Mother's Day. It's an exciting sign of a growing church when you get to do three baby dedications on Mother's Day. Come on down, just gather, gather around. Zach and Kaylee in the middle. Garrett and Alyssa over here. Family, come on down and just join with us today. This is beautiful. And these are three handsome young men. We love these families. Each of you are an important part of Christian Life Center and we thank God for each of you and welcome to the extended family, some who are guests who came to be with us today. James chapter 1, verse number 17 and 18 says this, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us His true word, and we out of all creation become His prized possession. These young men are perfect gifts from God. Now enjoy this stage. They probably won't always stay perfect. They're a good and perfect gift that God has given to us, His prized possession that He allows us to, to have for a time to love and to invest in, to prepare for life. And what you're doing today is important. It's significant as you dedicate Bo and Aiden and Emmett back to the Lord. You're making a decision and a commitment today to lead them, to raise them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. So we're going to do this collectively today as we make vows to the Lord. So I'm going I'm to ask you as parents simply to say we will at the conclusion of each of these statements that you would, that you would make a, a commitment to God and before this church family today that you're making a commitment about how you're going to raise these young men. So with this understanding, asking you to to make this solemn promise that by the grace of God that, that we're going to work together as a church family and as, as families and parents to fulfill our responsibilities, our obligations as stewards of this gift. Because your child is a gift from God, will you commit to value him as your heavenly father does? Will you love him unconditionally, treasure him unreservedly, and show him affection openly and unashamedly? You say we will. Because he belongs to God and you are stewards of his child, will you commit to train him in all manners to please the Lord Jesus Christ, teach him the weight and value of Scripture, make it your highest priority to ensure that he comes to accept, believe, and obey the Word of God? The greatest part of what he learns about his Creator won't come just from church or from a Sunday school class. He'll learn a lot more about God by what he observes in your home, by your life that you live before him will you commit to pattern before him the daily christian disciplines taught in scripture ensure that he discovers prayer and fasting and bible reading by observing those things in your life and teaching him the value of the church by being faithful to the house of god will you commit to provide in your home a refuge from the corruption of this world by grounding your family on biblical principles of righteousness and ensure that he knows that his body and soul were made by god and belong to god and consequently he must honor God in his lifestyle and appearance and conduct. And finally, will you throughout all of his days purpose to teach him that his reason for existence, his purpose for living is found first in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you instruct him that the highest fulfillment in life is to offer himself, his time, talent, his treasure back to the one who gave him life. And when God calls on him to do that, will you commit to release him to pursue the, pursue the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I believe God's witnessed your commitment today. He's heard that commitment that you have made to him. I believe that God is pleased that this act today is so much more than, than just a symbolic act, but it is a very real spiritual commitment that we are making today. 
Christian Life Center, we also have a responsibility as a church family to join with these families, to help, to lead, to invest, to give of ourselves. And I, I believe it's appropriate that home and church work together to fulfill the obligations that we have as parents. And so Christian Life Center, I charge you to join these families in the fulfillment of these responsibilities to love and to lead, to teach and to train, to encourage and support. And if you accept this responsibility today, I want you to stand with me as a sign of that commitment that you're going to join with each of these families to love these young men, to invest in them, to believe in them. And I believe that God has a great purpose for them. I believe that every single one of you have a great purpose. And together we have a collective purpose to serve the kingdom of God. We thank God for each of these gifts. We're going to take the time here to pray for them individually. And we'll just start right over here with Emmett. We're going to pray for them individually. And I'm going to invite the families to, to join with us and invite our church family. As we pray for Garrett and Alyssa and Emery. As we pray for Emmett today, we thank God for his life, for the purpose that God has bestowed upon him and placed within him. And man, he's handsome today. And he's pretty peaceful right now, so we're going to try to maintain that. Would you join us in praying together right now as a church family? Lord, we're so thankful for Emmett today. We thank you for his life. We pray, God that your hand would rest upon him. We thank you for this gift that you have given to Garrett and Alyssa today. And we pray, God, that your spirit would rest upon him, that would, you would guide his steps all the days of his life. We thank you for the purpose that you have placed within him. We pray that you would keep him and preserve him and watch over him. We pray today for Garrett and Alyssa, God, as they lead their family, that you would give them wisdom and direction in the spirit, that you would be with them, God, that you would watch over them, God, that you would protect them as a family, God. We pray that your spirit would be in their home, God, that your presence would be so real to them, God. We thank you for them as a family, God, and right now as we dedicate Emmett to you, we pray that you would take his life, God, and that you would use it for your glory, and for your kingdom we thank you for it in the name of Jesus we pray as we dedicate him back to you Lord in Jesus name in Jesus name let's thank the Lord for Emmett for Zach and Kaylee and for Bo. He is also very peaceful right now. This is amazing. We better be three for three. Just a handsome young man and we thank God for this family and for Bo. That's just a good, good boy's name. We're going to pray a dedication prayer right now as we dedicate Bo back to the Lord from which he came and trust the Lord with him. CLC, would you join us in praying right now? Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for Bo. We thank you, God, for his life. What a gift he is. We thank you, Lord, for you are the giver of life. And now as we bring him back to you, we pray that you would receive him today in the, the commitment of Zach and Kaylee, God, and that you would touch this child, that your hand would rest upon him all the days of his life, Lord, that he would grow in the fear and admonition, Lord, of, of you to, to know and to understand that he has a purpose that you have designed for him. And I pray, God, that you would keep him and watch over him and preserve him to fulfill that purpose. Let your presence, God, rest in their home. I pray right now for Zach and Kaylee, God, that you would be with them as they lead and guide and direct as they invest in their children. And I pray that you would give them wisdom and direction from the Holy Ghost. And God, we pray, Lord, that your presence would be in their home. Lord, that their children would know you and the power of your spirit, God. That your word would be alive to them. That you would direct them as they correct and guide and lead. And Lord, we thank you right now for Bo as we dedicate him back into your hands. We're trusting, God, that he is your child. We thank you for him and we dedicate him to your service and your purpose. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you for it, Jesus. In Jesus' name, let's thank the Lord for Bo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. 
Amen. He's just starting to wake up, so holding her breath here. We're so thankful for Boaz and Victoria becoming part of our church family here. We're thankful to have them part of our family. And it's no accident that they're here. Met JP and Melissa in the grocery store and noticed the I Love My Church my, I love my church t-shirts and said what's going on with these shirts and what's up with this church and they've become just very quickly a special part of our church family and we love Aiden and thank God for him it's a special day to be able to dedicate him to the Lord today church family would you pray with us right now we're going to see if he'll let sister Rebecca hold him we're going to pray and dedicate Aiden back to the Lord right now Lord we thank you Jesus for Aiden we thank you for his life and we pray right now God, that you would watch over him and keep him and preserve him. Lord, to fulfill the purpose that you've designed for him, we pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would rest upon his life. God, that you would touch Boaz and Victoria, their home. God, that your presence would be with them, that you would give them wisdom and direction, understanding. God, as they invest in his life, as they lead him and train him. God, we thank you for the opportunity we have today to trust his life back into your hands. And God, we pray that you would be with him, that you would go before him, God, that you would touch his life and lead him all the days of his life Lord we thank you for it Jesus as we dedicate him back to you today we put our trust our hope and our confidence in you God that you're going to lead this family we thank you God for blessing our church family Lord with such a wonderful gift and, and we give you praise and glory for it Lord as we dedicate him to you in the name of Jesus can we give the Lord thanks today for Aiden thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you did awesome <laughs> He did awesome. One more time, can we thank God for these three young men? God bless you. You can return to your seats. So thankful families and the dedication of these children and we are just so thankful for their commitment to this church we're going to ask our ushers to prepare right now get ready to make their way and give you an opportunity to give to the work of god's kingdom and we are truly blessed by our giving and we just encourage you to allow god to bless you uh, in what you give here today this is our weekly church offering we don't receive uh, a midweek offering anything like that this is our tithing and our offering we give it back to God and God just takes that and multiplies and blesses it and uh, we're just so thankful for that today and we're going to ask you if you would all across the congregation let's stand one more time we're going to go to God in prayer we're going to ask God to bless what we're giving to his kingdom and then we're going to receive this offering. Would you pray together? Lord, we thank you this morning that we can give. We thank you that we have an opportunity, Lord, to support this church and the kingdom. As we give this unto you, we pray that you will bless what is given, and the gift and the giver alike. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Church, it's time to bring an offering back. Give it to God with great joy today. God bless you. Ham, steak and shrimp. And homemade pizza. Tomato soup. Mashed potatoes. Eggs. Biscotti. Food. Oh, pizza. Pizza. Chicken. Macaroni and cheese. Or salad. Strawberries. Fettuccine Alfredo. Mac and cheese. Chicken. Tacos. Macaroni and cheese. Hamburgers. Lasagna. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Ooh. Noodles and broccoli. Hot dogs. You like cookies? Yeah. Can you say cookies? Doggy. Cookies. Noodles and broccoli with cheese. Macaroni and broccoli. Chicken Alfredo. Ziti. Honestly, I think it's her shells and cheese. She's so good. Breakfast. Mm -hmm. Just little chicken nuggets. Cooking. Do you sit down and watch movies with me? Sleep. Just teach. Just watch movies. Sleep. Reading. Work. Uh, Reading the Bible. Me. Me. <laughs> me. 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 She makes flower cleaning. George, do you go outside? Me. I'm in fun with me and my brother. Cook. Cleaning. Changing all of his diapers. Sewing. Cook. 
bed. Working. Taking care of my family. Your laundry. Cleaning. Cleaning. Probably playing Uno. Lots of things. Like sometimes she'll be texting with her friends or family members. We dinner and she likes to cook. Oh, to sleep. Buys me stuff. Just the reason that I got to answer these questions. She's nice. <laughs> she helps me do the right thing in life. She's so nice to me. She's always there for me. We love going to the work she stays. He spends time with me. She does a lot for me. Let's me in bed with her. She makes me the best cake. <laughs> She's nice. I sleep with her all the night. <laughs> she buys me things that I need. Please her too. She's funny. She loves me. She teaches me things. She's nice. On birthday, she lets sometimes she lets us have um, ice cream. She's sweet to us. She always does stuff for me. She's nice. She always takes care of me. Does your mommy like to hold your hand? Yeah. Yeah. How do you hold hands? She keeps the house clean. She helps take care of my family. She helps me. She takes care of me. She cuddles with me and we go at that time. She is helpful most of the time. Sometimes she helps me with my homework. Sometimes she helps me with things that I need to get done. She's nice and she's really helpful. She does everything for me because she snuggles with me. You may be seated. Well, all, to all of our mothers today, I give honor to you because this is our day. Now, down through the years, as our children grow, uh, we as mothers say a whole lot of things to them. And a lot of times it's through irritation and other times it's through frustration but the bottom line is, as mothers, we love our children and we want the best for them. So today we have a few of our mothers from CLC who are going to sing. And I'd like to ask all of you to please pay really close attention to the words of this song because they are priceless. And I know that you will be able to relate to them. So I'm going to ask these ladies to come and sing for us and please worship with them as they sing. Thank you, please, 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 please. 
that I gave you so willingly, but right now I thank you not to roll your eyes at me. Close your mouth when you chew would appreciate. Take a bite maybe too of the stuff you hate. Use a fork, do not burp, or I'll set you straight. Eat the food I put upon this plate. If I've told you once, I've said it at least a million times. And you're too old to act this way. It must be your father's DNA. Look at me when I am talking. Stand up straighter when you're walking. I'm mad. And everything must be in place. Stop crying or I'll give you something real to cry about. I'm a little speechless, not really sure what to say after that. Just wow. Wow. We have some special ladies in our church. Extra special. I'm not sure how she's supposed to follow that. But it is my incredible privilege today to be able to introduce our special speaker. I still remember exactly where I was. I could take you there today. It would take us a while to get there. To 816 Evergreen Drive in Houston, Texas, where I first laid eyes on Rebecca, what was then Lyman. I could take you to the spot. And something very quickly caught my attention. Besides her beauty, it was the first thing. But there was something about her that the way that she loved people and the way that she made others feel, the way that she could carry on a conversation and never say a thing about herself and make another person feel like they were the most important person in the world. And as I grew to love and appreciate her, I think you're beginning to discover what an amazing first lady, amazing mother, amazing wife, amazing mother that Sister Rebecca is. And I asked her to speak today. And I'll say she kind of reluctantly agreed. She'll say she's not a speaker, but... As you ladies have probably figured out, and just a, maybe hearing from her a few moments in a ladies' night, she's an incredible speaker, incredible communicator because of who she is as an individual, the character, integrity of, of who she is. And I thank God for her. And today, she's going to deliver the word of the Lord to us. Would you welcome our first lady, Sister Rebecca, today? Thank you so much. You may be seated. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all of our ladies, and what an incredible special that I get to follow. I tease them, I may have them do it again for altar call. We'll see. I think at one point in my life, I've been every single one of them and said every single one of those things. Do you guys feel that? 
What a privilege it is to be here with you today. I know our, sp our service today is a little extraordinary and, and perhaps longer than we've expected. I will be mindful of the time, but it is just an incredible privilege to stand before you here today. And when my husband asked me in January if I wanted to do this, my answer was yes, because <laughs> I do try to uh, accept opportunities when they come my way. But then I did again ask him last night if he had changed his mind. I would totally be okay with that as well. And I would celebrate Mother's Day with each of you, but uh, he said he had not. I asked him if he had a message on, on, like, the warmer, and he said no also. So you've got me today, but I just, um, I want to share a little bit of my heart with you today, and I hope that we can just uh, find the mind of God for a few minutes. And each of you ladies, my prayer is that you leave here encouraged, and maybe just a little bit challenged, but mostly encouraged, and that you, you leave here knowing that God knows your name, he's got your number, he's got your kids' numbers, he knows exactly where you are, and God wants to do something special in this service today. I've seen firsthand just in the last six months what incredible mothers we have at this church, and, and I've watched you. Um, you may have thought I was just getting to know you and your kids, but I've watched your skills and the ways that, that you mother, and, I, and I've just, I've stood in awe, and I've gone home, and I've sat in awe, and thought about just what incredible moms you are, and I know it's because uh, you, you take the effort and you make the time to be great moms. It doesn't just happen. It takes intentional effort, but you've also had amazing examples, and I honor today Sister Alice Kirk so much for what you mean to this church. I honor Sister Angie Kirk for what she means to this church, and we miss Sister Peggy Smith today, but I know that each one of them has had such an incredible role and plays such an important part in each of your lives, and I'm honored um, to join that, that list of those incredible ladies, and my prayer is that I can be what you need for me to be as, as First Lady of this church. I do want to wish my mom a happy Mother's Day. She is not here, but I know she's watching, and if anyone, if there's ever just one viewer on the webcast, it's my mom. I can promise you that, and I'm, I'm okay with that, because she, she loves this church, and she loves each of you, and, and she loves us, and I thought about it this week. She was the very first phone call I made when we left this church. Um, almost a year ago, June 11th, and I remember the tone of her voice. I'm not sure if I'd even told her where we were going. We traveled a lot, but I did make a phone call when we left here, and my words were, Mom, there's something special about Christian Life Center. I don't know God's plans for that church. I don't know God's plans for our lives, but there is something special about that church, and she committed to prayer with that about us, but but I, I do feel like, and you can double check with her, but I do feel like she sensed something in the spirit, and I've learned to trust that voice. I've learned to trust uh, my mom's what she feels and what, what she knows in the spirit. So I honor her today. She's always been my biggest supporter, my biggest fan, and, and she loved me enough 20 years ago to allow me to move across the United States. I wasn't supposed to meet anybody. I wasn't supposed to move. I was supposed to come back. But she loved me enough to let me pursue the will of God for my life, and, and I honor her today. My mom means a lot to me. I'm forever in debt to her for the sacrifices that she made to always prioritize our family. Please forgive my personal references today. It's, it's all I know. I'm a mom to these three kids. I, I can't tell your story today, but if, if you'll allow me just a little bit, I will reference uh, some of our family uh, drama. I hate to use that word already, but we're going to go there. I've already apologized to all three of my babies, and uh, one of them did not know I was the main speaker today. And so yesterday, I'm glad we got that out. I think they thought I was doing a, a class maybe somewhere for ladies, but... They were a little shocked when they found out I would be up here, and I said, I'm shocked too. It's okay. <laughs> we're all in this boat together, but motherhood is a beautiful gift. Becoming a mom truly changes you. It's a defining point in your life timeline that everything you face after that is forever filtered through the fact that your life is not quite your own anymore. You're never really in control anymore, and for some of us people who like to be in control, it's not always easy when you got a little newborn. You are no longer in control, but God has somehow entrusted each of us with the responsibilities of these tiny little humans. And I want to show you a picture of the moment I became a mother. I became a mother three months earlier than I ever expected. Lincoln was very early, uh, 11 weeks to the day early, and uh, we were not ready. We were not. I don't know if you're ever quite ready for that moment, but this is actually the second day of his life because I was, I was too scared to hold him the first day. I think Dad got to hold him before that. But I do remember realizing, wow, everything up to this point, is a part of my life that will forever, forever change. And it's a beautiful gift, but it is also an incredible responsibility. And as they grow, your role really doesn't change. They change, and maybe their needs for you might change, but you still love, you still sacrifice, you still always want what's best for them, even if it means you go without. You're always a mom, and they're always your babies. 
Your friendships multiply as you join this fabulous group of women who just understand you. They just get you. They just know what you're feeling. You always have something to talk about when you can talk about your kids. It's a beautiful bond that transcends ages or even seasons of motherhood across this sanctuary. I love that we have mothers that are in all different stages of life. Some of you, your grandkids are your lives. And I've talked to you about that, and I absolutely love it. When you travel to go see them, when you're there for their graduations, when nieces or nephews are still a priority to you. I just love that because it reminds me that, yes, as a newborn, there are completely dependent on us, but you never really outgrow that beautiful gift of motherhood. There's nothing like being a mom. I'm going to give you a few little things that I came across that just, they remind you, you know what? You know you're a mom when. Are you guys ready? You can laugh. It's okay. Everybody take a deep breath. We're going to get into the word of God, I promise. But you know you're a mom if you've ever been so excited about your baby learning to walk, and then you instantly get sad and wish that they could unlearn how to walk. You're like, why, why did I encourage them? Why did I stand them up? I remember that exact feeling. When the most exciting parts of your day are bedtime, and then you can't wait to see them wake up, morning wake-up time. When you wish every store had a drive through I have had that thought. Why doesn't every store have a drive through You know you're a mom when toddler leashes no longer seem like punishment or cruel or unusual. We tried one of those one time with Grant. He refused to move. He was little bitty, and he needed a leash. If any babies ever needed a leash, I couldn't keep up with him. But he knew. He was smart enough to know that little harness thing. If it got strapped on, he just didn't move. So I, he was too big to carry, so we had to chase. But they, they just make sense for some reason. You know you're a mom when you believe pizza represents all the food, food groups, and goldfish is an absolutely acceptable breakfast. You know you're a mom if you've ever signed anything with a crayon. I did that last week because you can't find a pen, but crayons are always there. You know you're a mom when you hate homework even now more than you did as a kid. Someone else's homework is even more painful. You know you're a mom when, if you've ever dropped your kids at Sunday school and going to adult class feels like date night. It just feels like, oh, we made it. We made it. You know you're a mom when grocery shopping alone is a vacation. Absolutely. I love it. You know you're a mom if your husband's ever in bed with a fever and you're jealous because he's in there having quiet time. You know, you're a mom if you find yourself doing 90% of the things you said you would never do. And I am guilty. Before you have kids, you see other moms, maybe things that I would never do that. I, don't say never because you'll do probably all of those. You know, you're a mom if you ever open your mouth and you literally hear your mom's voice coming out of your mouth. How does that happen? It just does. You say things you never thought you'd say. You know, you're a mom if you've ever shouted across the house, don't you dare put that in the toilet. Some things just have to be said. You know you're a mom if you truly understand the statement of your heart living outside your chest when you have that baby and they completely take all of your heart. And there's your heart wandering around without you and you love them forever. And we've all had those kinds of days. We've laughed about it, cried about it, but we wake up every morning and do it all again. Brother Chuck preached an awesome message this morning about moms and just all the different hats and jobs and responsibilities we have. But I read that the average mom works 98 hours a week. 98. That's how many hours it takes. Morning till night, every single day. We wake up every morning. We do it all over again. And even if we do slip away, I found this for myself. I think I'm getting away. I end up missing my kids. I end up calling them. I end up thinking about the laundry that's going to be stacked up when I get home. So sometimes it's just better to have them with me. But it's not just the work that we do as moms. It's the weight. It's the responsibility that we have. It's the questions we ask ourselves. Have I done enough? Have I taught them enough? Do they even like me? Am I the worst mom in the world? I've, I've asked myself those questions. I hope you have occasionally too. But it's this filtered, edited photos, seemingly perfect, social media-driven world that we raise our kids in today. If we aren't careful as moms, we can get discouraged. We can begin to compare. And let me tell you, as a mom who has done that, it's not good. We see adorable, clean, genius children with smiling siblings that appear to love each other. A foreign thought in my home. But we see spotless homes in the backgrounds of photos, and I've zoomed in on them. Has anyone ever done that? Someone posts a picture of their kid, you zoom in to see how clean their house is. And they always look great. Moms who are able to scrapbook every moment of their kids' lives, cook a five-course meal seven nights a week. I'm tempted to judge myself a little harshly or compare my mothering skills to another mom's skills. We are all unique, though, and we're perfectly equipped for the children that God gave each of us. We tell our kids not to compare. We tell them not to worry about somebody else's house and what they have or don't have, but I think sometimes we need to speak that into our own life. We all post our best days and our kids' best pictures, but I promise if you think I have it all together, I'll be honest, you might be misinformed. Most days I am a mess and I wake up uh, needing Jesus from the moment my feet hit the floor 
until I go to bed at night. I have to-do lists that never get done. My kids eat way too much Taco Bell, but you know what? <laughs> We're all in this together. My kids have learned that if I'm cleaning, it probably means somebody's coming over. And, and the first time one of them asked me that, I was like, oh, they know my secret, but it's true when I'm mopping. Who's coming over, Mom? So if you've ever been that guilt-ridden mom that might jokingly call yourself Mom of the Year, maybe you've texted a friend a funny picture of your kids, maybe they've eaten cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner one day, and that's okay. That's okay to do. Or maybe your daughter had to wear your son's socks because laundry wasn't done. Maybe you've had to borrow a diaper from a stranger while you're out in public. I've done that. <laughs> maybe you're that mom who accidentally forgot a permission slip or forgot to bring your kid to Little Women or Bridge Builders, and I've been that mom, and you will forever hear about it, and you feel terrible. Mom of the year. Maybe your teenager has slammed a door and tells you that you are single-handedly ruining their life. Maybe it's mom of the year day. Maybe it's been a rough day, and you've corrected more than you've been able to love. Maybe you've cleaned more than you've played. You know that your little darling is probably not going to make you an I love you card at, at school tomorrow. It's just been one of those days, and you lay in bed, and you may not think that you're worthy of that mom of the year title, but I've come to just encourage you today, every one of you in my book is mom of the year, and every one of us can do things to make sure that, you know, one day our kids will say that about us. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but you are mom of the year, the real one, not just the hashtag sarcastic one that we send with, with pictures of, of our kids doing random things, but you are mom of the year. And my prayer is that you leave today encouraged, strengthened, and even challenged by the word of God to be the best mom, to be the best grandma to be the best influencer. If you have influence in someone's life, you are a mom to them, that what, the best one that you can be today. On a particularly challenging day, I personally began to think about what God wants me to be as a mom, because I can put big expectations on myself, and I can be disappointed in goals, goals that I hold myself to, but what does mom of the year look like to God? And I made a list. Anybody a list maker in the house? I've made lists. Accomplishments, values, requirements, things I felt like I needed to do and I probably should be doing, but in prayer I gently felt God begin to just strip those things away one by one until I was left with just two words, two goals, two things to measure my success as a mom, two filters that everything else can flow through, two very doable commands from the Spirit and from the Word of God, two actions that as a mom, if I could get these right, it could be the keys to my success. So I talked to you today about a mom who prays and a mom who protects. Very simple, two words, to pray and protect. Our text today, Romans 12, verses one and two. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and your proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. I've always loved and been challenged by these verses. I've connected with the principle of changing my thinking and intentionally renewing my mind. Ladies, I think if we're honest with ourselves, no matter our age or our kids' age or whatever stage of life we're in, we have emotions, we fight feelings, we fight the roller coaster, the up and down that can run away if we are not careful. We compare our situations, our home life, or our successes with other moms and other homes. We're too hot on ourselves sometimes. We're tempted to react when our kids do something. We can go from zero to 100 when our husbands say something. Anybody been there? Just a little word. It doesn't take much, but if it's the final word, woo. Our battle is often, though, ourselves, our thoughts, our emotions, how we mentally process our days and our life. And this is where Mom of the Year finds time to pray. Prayer has to be the foundation, ladies, of our every day. And I've been blessed with a praying mom. Not just a mom who prays, but one who woke me up most mornings of my life by praying. And she just has that voice, and she's on her knees in the living room. We didn't need an alarm clock because she was praying, and it woke us up. She was getting a hold of God. I want my kids to see me pray. I want my kids to know that I pray. At church, absolutely. I hope every woman in this church realizes our privilege and our responsibility to lead in prayer, to lead in worship, so our kids see that it is a priority at church. They need to see that unashamed worship that is demonstrated here by our moms. They need to see deep praying in the Holy Ghost, liberty in the Holy Ghost, not worried or concerned about who sees us or what that person would think. Give us women, oh God, who are desperate for a move of your spirit. But if our kids see us pray here, I hope more than anything that they see us pray at home. If they hear me pray at these altars, if they see me worship, I hope it is a lifestyle that is consistent with what they see Monday through Saturday at my home. It cannot just be in the four walls of this church, ladies. But let it be a challenge that in both places your kids learn 
my mom prays. I want that to be said of me. You've each heard it of people whose moms perhaps have gone on. My mom was a prayer warrior. Can your kids say that about you? Could your kids say that you're a worshiper, that you were a leader of worship? Because we're all called to be worship leaders. Some are up here, some may be back there, but you are called to be a worship leader. We've got to have a relationship with God. I pray that my kids see me make time at home. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be loud and glamorous, but they see you when you're on your knees at the couch. I pray my kids hear me worship and praise while I'm driving and I'm singing, and I embarrass them often, but I'm okay with that because it's praise and worship and it's good music, and the person next to me might need to hear it. So I pray that, that they hear me do that, that they know that there is liberty and freedom in worship, that they hear me pray out loud in the middle of my day, that I just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that parking spot. I needed that parking spot today. Little things like that. Kids learn that prayer is a priority, and they learn that it's important to their moms. And we don't just pray for our children, but I pray most of my prayers sometimes for myself. God, help me to be the mom that they need to be. Yes, we pray for our kids, and that's a priority, but if we're not the moms that they need, then I don't think enough prayers can be prayed for them specifically. So I pray, God, help me to be a better mom. Let my mind be renewed in you today. Let my mind be transformed in you today. Let my focus be on you. Let my thinking be right. Let my will be lost in your will, God. I must decrease so you can increase. Help my children to see your love in me today. Help me to be the example that they need to see. Because kids see everything, don't they? If you've ever been reminded of that, let them tell you something that they saw that you didn't think they saw. Kids see everything. Let them see that you are my priority. Lord, teach me to pray. Jesus' disciples, that they asked him that. Teach us to pray. Teach us to make it a priority. Teach us how to pray. It's okay to have your kids right there next to you. And sometimes we have conversations while we pray. We'll pray for a minute, and then we'll talk about what we just prayed about. We'll talk about what we need to pray about. It's okay. It doesn't have to be stiff and starchy. But let them know that that relationship with God, that communication one-on-one -on -one is a priority to you. Be a praying mom. Give me wisdom. Solomon prayed for wisdom and knowledge knowledge, the application of wisdom. It's not just enough to know everything and to, to have wisdom, but you've got to be able to apply that. And I truly believe that my mom always had knowledge because we could never get away with anything. She knew it. And this is before cell phones and Facebook. So I don't know how she knew, but she was on her knees and she knew everything that we did. So I pray, God, give me wisdom and knowledge. Pray for your eyes to be opened as moms. God's ways are high above our ways. Our human eyes, our realistic thinking can't always process what God is doing in the supernatural. We've got to be sensitive to his spirit. I read something earlier this year that I want to share with you, and um, it was around the time that my husband had asked me to do this service, and, and I knew that God had given it to me four or five months early because I needed to process it. But in, in the Bible reading program, you know, we were reading in Genesis, and it talked about Hagar, the mom of Ishmael, and how they had gone through things in their family, and they were, they were made to leave into the wilderness. Um, the Bible says that God told Abraham, send them into the wilderness. So they go into the wilderness, and, and they run out of water, and, and the Bible really quickly in Genesis 21 says they were, they were preparing to die. And it says that Hagar cried and that she put her son far away because she just couldn't bear to see him hurt, to see him suffer. And, and um, God, God spoke to her. It doesn't say that she prayed, but it says God spoke to her and said, I have heard the prayers of your son, and I will make of your son a great nation. And verse um, 19 of chapter 21 says, And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. It doesn't say he put a well of water right there that had not been, been there, but it says that he opened her eyes where she could see it. And I think about and I pray that over my kids. God, help me to see things that you see them. You may be in a desperate situation with kids. Some of us who have older kids or you have uh, challenging situations, you may feel like your dreams are dead for your kids. You may feel like visions and hopes that you had had for their life are gone. But God says, Op open, open your eyes. There is provision here. I have a plan. And he said, I have a plan for this boy. Some may have meant it for evil, but God can turn things for good. And if we can have that prayer, God, I may not see it in my wilderness. I may not see it in my desert right now for my kid, but there is a well. There is sustenance. And when God has a plan for your children, moms, there is nothing that can stop that. So I pray that often. God, open my eyes. Help me to see this situation as you see it, because we can get so just wrapped in our box. And that's normal and natural, ladies. We see situations black and white. This is what's going on in my life. But there is a well. There is a promise that God has. And if he has a plans for our kids, ladies, nothing we can do but get on board because God is in control. So I don't know what you're facing today, but I hope that 
that that was something that you can pray now over your kids. God, it may be discouraging, but I pray that you would open my eyes as Hagar's eyes were open. God had a plan. He had a plan for a nation, not only for the survival of Ishmael, but he said, I will make of him a great nation. Moms and grandmas, pray. Don't give up. Allow God to work. Stand on his promises. Trust him in the face of adversity, things that do not even make sense. When you can't see him working, I encourage you, keep praying. Prayer keeps us from being conformed to this world. Pray Romans 12 often. God, renew my mind. Be not conformed to this world. Prayer transforms our thinking. Prayer helps us to see the good, the perfect will of God. Ephesians 6, verse 18, I love it. It says, pray in the spirit on all occasions, at all times. It's a good time to pray with all kinds of prayer and requests. So with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for God's people. Moms, we need to be alert. We have to be aware. We cannot bury our heads in the sand when we pray. God, at all times, help me to be alert. So mom of the year, pray. Keep praying. Pray in the spirit. Pray with boldness. I pray that you would teach your kids to pray and teach them by example. Be an example of bold worship. Be an example of exuberant worship. You are in a church where worship is allowed. And freedom and liberty in the Holy Ghost is allowed. There is nothing that you, are, that you could possibly do that is going to be stopped in worship. So we encourage you, be bold in worship. Kids are watching. They need to see us be the examples. Be the prayer warrior, mom of the year, that I know you can be. Moving quickly, number two. I told you it was going to be simple. Just two things that you can do. Pray, and then number two is to protect. I show you this picture here today just because um, my, my city family is on a little journey here. This is the closest thing we've ever had to a pet. Um, but I've never had a nest built. That's my front door there. Um, I've never had a nest on my front door. Maybe this happens to everyone every year. I know Sister Angie's got a beautiful nest as well. But I got this wreath at Hobby Lobby. It's not even real. It is plastic as they come. But about five weeks ago, my mom was watching my kids, and I came home, and she said, there's a nest in your wreath. And I was like, oh, no, what do I have to do? And she said, do not use your front door for two months. I'm like, oh, mom, is that possible? Well, it is possible because that's what we've done. We're on month two. So here's just a little progression. We got very excited to see the eggs. Look how cute. Very, very, very cute. And there was five. They hatched about a week later, bottom left corner. And there was five. We were really excited. And there are still five. So that's, that was taken yesterday on the bottom right. But there is a mom of these birds. And let me tell you, she is a mama. Woo! And she can protect uh, it's on our front door, and even though we do not use the front door, occasionally we walk by it. Oh, my goodness, we live there. We still have to go in the garage, but she does not like it. And if you get too close, she flies out of the nest, but in doing so, she swoops and gets as close to your face as she can, just reminding you those are her babies. And, and my kids have wondered, when are we ever going to use the front door again? I don't know. They're still in there. But it, it just reminded me a mother's nature to protect and how beautiful that that is. It's a sobering and overwhelming thought, ladies, sometimes to think of our responsibility in this world as parents to protect our children. When they're small, we protect them physically. We teach them flames are hot. We teach them not to run in the road. We teach them to watch out for flying balls at the park. But beyond that, today we're raising kids in a very scary world, increasingly wicked, the Bible says. That's not very encouraging, is it? But we have been warned. This world we live in is getting worse and worse. It's tempting to go to the extremes, moms, and either just give up on protective parenting, whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen, or to just hide our kids away and protect them from everything. But we know that somewhere in the middle and wisdom and biblical balance is what we have to find. I encourage you today with words that you know, but they were spoken to Esther by her uncle, and he said, who knew if you were come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And I thought about our moms today, and I thought about the children that God has entrusted you with, and it may seem overwhelming as you try to protect them and as you try to teach and guide them. But I encourage you, you are brought to this kingdom. You are brought to that home and to your home life. Those kids were made to be yours for such a time as this. Yes, our world is wicked, but what a light we can shine. As moms of the year who pray and protect, you have a beautiful privilege to protect those kids. We face parenting challenges that maybe our moms didn't have to deal with. Our world is not always a warm, fuzzy place to raise a family, but God has given you those babies, moms. He's given you his never-changing word. He's given you a wonderful church. He has equipped you with wisdom and anointing as you protect your family. And with this changing, invasive, media-driven, and connected world, we must protect. And protection, I wish, was just shielding. I wish it was just protecting everything from ever coming against our children. But I think a huge part of protection is teaching. 
Moms, you have to tell our kids why. You have to explain the process of what we are protecting them from. Kids need to know. Rules without explanation only last for so long. Yes, obedience is the best, but the Bible speaks often of training up your children in the way that they should go. It is not naturally going to happen, especially in this world that we live in today. It takes intentional effort. Prayer alone is not enough, but God give us wisdom and knowledge. There is application involved in parenting. Proverbs 1.8 says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father. Forsake not the law of thy mother. I like that. Par yeah, kids, you can memorize that. Proverbs 1.8. But forsake not the teachings of thy mother, as another translation says. So it implies that there must be teachings. Not just rules, not just yeses and nos, but there is teaching involved. Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. And we know, obviously, we can't leave our kids at home by themselves. But in another way, a child, and a translation says that a child left undisciplined or left to find their own way bringeth his mother to shame. Foolishness is bound in our kids' hearts. Proverbs tells us that, but we have a responsibility. It's not our job to be our kids' best friend. One of my kids actually told me last week they didn't even ask me about something because they knew my answer was no. I'm like, really? Am I that predictable? And Grant said, you're a no mom. He said, you're a no mom. I said, am I really? I really wasn't offended by that. I was kind of proud, actually. You know what? It's my job. It's my job, and at this time, if I'm a no mom, that's okay. <laughs> Their daily happiness, unfortunately, is not my ultimate goal. I tell my kids all the time, God gave you to me, and it is my job and my privilege to see that you become successful adults, making it to heaven. I worry sometimes when I see parents who are best friends with their kids, because I wonder who's in charge, who's protecting, who's correcting, who's chastening in love. Now, friendship can definitely come. My mother and I are very, very close, but we are almost 40 years into a life of absolutely not, no way, no ma'am. You're not doing that. You're not wearing that. As for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. These are things that she put into me. And I always knew that the word that came from my dad and mom was final and that it was truth. And I thank them for that. You can't trust your kids. And not that we don't trust them to do right from wrong, but they live in a world that is bent and absolutely determined to destroy them. The Bible tells us that our enemy's purpose and who he is, he's come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Ladies, sometimes that just scares me. Those are three very dramatic words that, we, that God gave us as a warning and that we have to be aware of. The enemy has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Not just us, moms and dads, grandmas, but he would love to work one generation at a time. Our kids, no matter their ages, they are under attack. They need boundaries, guidelines. They need parents who are not afraid to stand up for truth. Mom of the year, you can do it. You can protect your kids. I encourage you, if you are not here Wednesday night, our pastor preached an amazing message that has honestly changed my thinking and, and changed my parenting even in the last four days. But if, if you're able to get online, please watch that message. He talked about four practical applications of holiness. But if you were here on Wednesday, would you raise your hand? I know there was a great crowd, but there was a call in the spirit if you felt it. And I know our pastor is anointed, but the word is anointed. And from the very beginning, when the word went forth, I was challenged, but I was also excited because I thought, oh, God loves us. He loves us as a parent enough to chasten us and enough to, to convict us of things that might get in our way. And I said, thank you, Jesus, for loving our church. Thank you for putting out that call to holiness. It was beautiful. I will watch it again, and I will watch it again with my children. But any time the word goes forth, there is a, a response that is required. What kind of soil is that word, the seeds landing on? And that is, that is my personal cry every service that we come into when the word goes forth. God, let me leave this place changed. We have kids, we have generations that are depending on us. We have to first be changed. So let our heart soil, let it be what it needs to be. The enemy of our soul would love for us to just be comfortable, to be complacent in this world, to be rocked to sleep. But moms, we've got to recognize the battle that we are in, and we have to be strong. Rise up, pray, and protect. It's simple. Pray and protect. This world makes you feel like you're not doing enough, not giving your kids enough opportunities, maybe not making their life perfect, but we're not supposed to be conforming to this world. Remember our text, be not conformed to this world. We should be living counterculture. We should be doing different things than moms on our block are doing. We should have different guidelines, boundaries, and rules for our kids than other family members or friends have. It's okay. Those are your kids. You get one shot with them, and it goes by very very fast. My brother's been trying to get me to read a book that's called 18 Summers. 
And I told him, I cried when he told me about it. I said, I can't even read the book. You guys know, I mean, the title alone, 18 Summers, that is the time that you really get. Not that you don't continue to influence, and, and moms and grandmas, you are an influence and a very strong support for our children, but really, we have a short, short time. We need the wisdom of God. Moms, we need the wisdom of God. I hope you're encouraged here today. Pray and protect. It's very simple. The world would like to tell us we have to meet a lot more guidelines than that. But if, if our relationship with God, I believe, is where it needs to be, you will be mom of the year. And praying and protecting your kids is so important. God's strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. We all have failures, weaknesses in our own mom life that we wish, oh, man, I wish I was that mom. Or I wish I could do this. I wish I could do these different things that so-and-so is talented with. You know what? God is faithful. He loves our kids more than we do. He can make up the difference. I pray that often. God, in areas where I am weak, let your strength be made perfect for my kids. Would you stand with us today? I'm challenged today as a mom, as a pastor's wife, as a leader, and as a friend to, to you moms. I'm challenged for us all to reach our full potential, to be mom of the year, the mom of the year that I know you are and that you can continue to be, not the, the sarcastic mom of the year, look what my kid did, but honestly, if we can factor in uh, challenges and questions that our kids may bring to us through those two categories, God, have I prayed? God, can I pray about this more? God, can I protect? How have I protected? Our text promises us that we will prove what is that good, the acceptable, the perfect will of God. I don't know about you, but I need that. My own mind, I can't really see down the road like I would like to, the perfect will of God. But if our minds are renewed, if we are transformed daily through prayer, God promises us that we will see the perfect will of God. It's never too late to be mom of the year. I have made mistakes. I will continue to make so many mistakes. But I promise you, if you will commit to pray, to protect, I kind of feel every year like Mother's Day is almost like a New Year's Day for moms. It's a chance. You know, they, they love us. They're bringing us gifts. They're honoring us. You know what? How can I improve after this till next Mother's Day for the rest of 2018? What can I do? What can I personally change and improve on? I'm going to invite all of our ladies to come to the front. Every lady, mother or not, we honor you today. But I want us to join together. We're going to pray individually just for ourselves. But if you're willing to make that commitment today, if you want the wisdom of the Holy Ghost to help lead your children and your family, if you want his knowledge to direct your every step, to direct your choices, if you can commit to allowing God to just simplify those expectations that our world tries to put on us. And you know what? You are the beautiful, perfect mom that God gave to your children. And they are lucky to have you. I tell my kids that all the time. You are lucky to have me. So if you want to tell them every once in a while, that's good too. And I'll tell your kids just how lucky they are to have you beautiful moms. Come on up. What a beautiful group. Moms, you are enough. You are everything that your kids need. You have what it takes. You have the word of God. You have a church that supports you. You have a ladies ministry that loves you. We are here for you together. We can do this. Would you close your eyes and bow your head as we pray? In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your presence here today. God, I thank you for this beautiful service for every mom, grandmother, and woman that is represented here today. God, I pray that your power and your anointing would just begin to move as we surrender the last part of this service to you, God. We are honored to be in your presence. As we celebrate each of our mothers today, God, I pray that there would continue to be a call in the spirit, a call to holiness, a call to righteousness, a call, Lord, to enduring in these last days, a call to pray, a call to protect like never before. God, I pray that there would be wisdom and knowledge and dude in this place, God, that hearts and lives would be sensitive to your presence, God, and I pray that you would just encourage every heart here today. We recognize our need for you, God, and we pray that you would draw us closer to you. In the name of Jesus, God, you see our weaknesses. God, you see where I fall short, Lord, but I know that you are faithful. Your word is true. Every promise in the word is for me. God, open our eyes. Help us to see our situations, God, as you see them. Help us to see where you have provided sustenance for our children, for our families, for times where we may feel weak, where we may feel like we can't do it on our own, God. I pray that you would be there. I pray that you would strengthen and touch every lady in the house today. Unify our response, God. Unify our team, Jesus. I pray that our answer would be yes, God. That we would surrender, Jesus, to your will and to your way. I pray that every mom here would leave encouraged today. That they would know that you have called them to the kingdom for such a time as this. That they would know that you have poured into them everything that they need. That you are equipping us, God. 
Help them to be encouraged, God. Help them to have hope. I pray for dreams to be restored, God. I pray for visions to be renewed, Jesus. I pray for healing to happen in our homes, Jesus. In our children's lives, God. In any areas of pain, Jesus. I pray that you would just pour your love out on us, oh God. Help us to be women of God that seek after you. Help us not to be complacent, Lord. Help us not to be lukewarm in this last, last hour, God. But let us be on fire for you. God, let us be determined. Let us be desperate for you. Whatever it takes, Jesus. Whatever it takes, God. I want to be willing, oh God, to fight this battle. To stand in the gap for my children. I want to be willing, God, to set boundaries that you have given us according to your word. God, I want to be willing to make those tough choices, oh God. Help us, Jesus, to just listen to your voice today as you talk to each one of us individually. Draw us close to you in your presence, oh God. We just take another moment, oh God, to surrender to you. Lord, I pray that you would change me in this place. Never let me go. God, I don't want to leave this place the way I came. Help me to be a better mother in all that I do, Jesus. Not my will, oh God. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come in my heart. Let your will be done in my home, Jesus. Draw us close to you. That's it, ladies. Just take another moment in this
We thank you for it, Jesus. Oh, let's thank the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rebecca, for that incredible word from the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. It was challenging and encouraging, and I think for, for all of us here today to pray and to protect. I think we can all take something from this message today. Every single one of us have influence in a life. Whether it's a child, a sibling, a co-worker, a neighbor, a friend, whoever it is, we have influence in others and we have a responsibility to each other, the responsibility to the next generation. I just, I, I want to encourage each of you today, and especially our mothers, you, some of you today, you may carry the, the weight, maybe you didn't have a, a positive mother figure in your life, and maybe you feel at times that that you are inadequate or you didn't have a, a, a good example and how are you to be a good example I, I want to encourage you that that God is with you and God understands what your past is he understands the things that have, have taken place in your past and God's with you and his grace makes up the difference for all of us his anointing is that grace that makes up the difference where we feel like we fall short and some of you may feel like, man, I, I, I'm not the, the, the mother that I need to be, the grandmother I want to be. Receive this word today. Let it be written on your heart that God understands everything you have need of, what your family needs. And he placed you in that family to be the mother, to be the grandmother, to be the influencer that you need to be in a life. One more time, can we just thank God for his goodness, for his word to us today. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. trust that you'll have a wonderful rest of the day if you're able to be with your mother today give your mother a big hug let her know how much you love and appreciate her our prayers are with those today that your mother has has gone on our prayers are with you we know this can be a challenging day but it is a, a special day to remember and to reflect and to think about how good God has been to us why don't you greet one another in the name of the Lord have a wonderful day and a great